Welcome to Inside the Vandals, a weekly show covering University of Idaho football and the Vandals in action. Inside the Vandals is brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. I'm Braden Kane. And I'm Harrison Lashinger. Thank you for joining us on the show once again as we get set to play the Montana Grizzlies in a rivalry game. It's also senior day today, so a lot of these seniors will be taking their field for the last time as a Vandal. And we have some stories about them later on in the show. Before we take a look at those, let's take a look back at our game against North Dakota this past weekend right here in the Kibbe Dome. One of the best games the Vandals have played all season. Came down to the last 30 seconds. Let's take a look back. It's quiet in the dome now, but just hours ago, the Vandals had this place rocking as they staged a heroic comeback against North Dakota. The Vandals came into today's game looking to protect their perfect record in the dome against a strong Fighting Hawks offense. Idaho would strike first on the board after a 43-yard touchdown run by Isaiah Saunders. They would then follow it up with a 10-yard dart from Mason Petrino to David Ungerich to go up 14-7 late in the first quarter. North Dakota would answer with a touchdown pass of their own to keep the game locked at 14 going into the half. Idaho found themselves trailing by 10 early on in the fourth quarter with little offense to show. But with just over eight minutes to play, the Vandals blocked a punt and returned it for six to move within three points and give this team new life. Mason Petrina would get one more shot with just under three minutes to drive the ball 57 yards downfield. After a crucial fourth down conversion, Jeff Cotton answered the prayer, catching the game-winning touchdown with 27 seconds left, putting Idaho up 31 27. Idaho moves to four and five on the season and look to close out the season undefeated at home as they take on the Montana Grizzlies on senior day. I had a chance to catch up with Coach Petrino to talk about last week's win against North Dakota as well as today's matchup against Montana. Joined now by head coach Paul Petrino. Coach, clearly an exciting game last Saturday, completing the comeback victory. Tell me some of the things you were telling your team that last seven minutes of the game before the block punt down 10 points. You know, we kind of talked about it all week that it was going to be a tough game. You know, they're a top 25 team. Um, we knew they're just a hard-nosed, tough team that's going to just try to bang and fight. And we just talked about being brave, really. That was the message of the week, be brave. Be, be brave enough to keep fighting the whole game, brave enough to stand up and hit them as hard as they try to hit you. And let's just let's go out there and fight the whole game and no matter what, believe in the process and keep fighting. And we thought all week long we were going to block a punt, so um, we thought that was going to be a difference and help us, and it ended up being it. Speaking of bravery, I would say the defense definitely had some of those moments, some major stops down the stretch. Uh, what do you have to say about their performance in the last game? Yeah, I thought they played well. I thought they did a good job. Gave up a couple big plays that we don't need to give up. One was on a misalignment down the sideline. But for the most part, they really played with toughness. Guys held their gaps. Guys played tough and did a good job. Mm -hmm. That last drive, Mrs. Petrino goes five for eight on passing, has a crucial fourth and six conversion to Dave Ungerer, completes the drive with the back corner throw to Jeff Conn to take the lead. What were you thinking through that last sequence of plays and ultimately after you guys scored and took that lead with under 30 seconds left? You know, I was just real proud of him. He competed his tail off. He got whacked hard a lot in the mm -hmm. game, and I was just proud that he kept fighting. You know, that's he's a fighter. He's always going to compete. Um, the, the scramble play today was huge. The scramble play on second and 18 to Jeff mm -hmm. was probably every bit as big because that was a 12-yard gain. Mm -hmm. And then the very first second down of the drive, we ran a run and play with Isaiah, and it yep. was it was second and 10, and he gained 11 yards. So those were probably his three of the biggest plays in the drive, and then obviously to finish it off with a touchdown, that was huge. Mm -hmm. We'll switch gears now, look at this week's game. You have Montana. They're pretty balanced offensively. What are some of their strengths that you've been preparing for this week? Uh, their quarterback's athletic. Um, he runs around, makes plays happen. I think their their receivers, they got a good group of receivers that, that can make things happen. A couple tall guys that catch the ball, and then some little fast, quick guys. Um, I'd say that's their biggest strength. Um, they're going to try to run the ball, but their leading rushers are quarterback. So we we got to stop him, keep him from getting big plays, running the ball, and then and then hit him as much as possible when he's trying to throw it. This Saturday is also once again another rivalry game, battle of the Little Brown Stein. Uh, does this add any significance to the game? You know, renewing another long time rivalry. Yeah, I think it does. You know, I told the guys. Uh, Last night at the walkthrough and again this morning after practice, it could be really, we could send these seniors off with going undefeated at home this last year and carrying a trophy off the field. Mm -hmm. So I think any time that you play for 
I think it makes it a cool rivalry when they actually have something that you win, <laughs> yeah. you know, than just saying it's a rivalry. Mm-hmm. But I remember when we were at, when I was at Louisville, we played Kentucky for the Governor's Cup, and we'd play yep. Cincinnati for the Keg and Nails. And I think any time you can actually walk off the field with something, that makes it a little bit cooler. Mm-hmm. Well, as you said, this Saturday will be senior day. A group of these guys will be taking the field for the last time as Vandals in the Kibbe Dome. What has this group of seniors meant to you, not only you, but the team as well this year? They meant a lot. They helped hang that banner up there, that bull banner, you know. Um, they're, they're, they're a great group of kids. They're all going to leave here with their degrees. Um, they're going to be really successful. We don't have that many of them. Um, so, uh, but they're all really special, good kids, and everyone should come out and support them for their last home game. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all the questions I have for you this week, Coach. As always, once again, thank you for joining us on the show, taking time out of your day. Hey, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Up next, we take a look at two outstanding seniors on offense when we return. The all-new 2019 Subaru Ascent is amazing. Pull a camper up to 5,000 pounds with 260 horsepower, 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, seating for up to eight people, standard with eyesight, 19 cup holders, Now you can do all this in a Subaru. Tour our large selection of pre-owned Subarus during the Subaru Love Strikes Twice certified pre-owned event now through October 31st. Roger Subaru, we care about what you're driving. This Saturday is gonna be pretty Pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I don't, I don't really know what to expect until the day comes as far as emotions. And, but it'll be great to have my mom here and have her out on the field and kind of celebrate the, f- the past five years I've been here. Uh, it, it's great. I couldn't ask, for, uh, couldn't ask for a better way to go out for my senior year. You know, it's a big rivalry game, so I'm trying to go out here. Uh, you know, obviously practicing hard and everything. Uh, the senior year has been full of a lot of trials and triumph, you know, uh, some wins and losses. and. Uh, you know, it's been a been a real learning experience trying to become a leader and uh, try to try to help these young guys develop and uh, make the program better for the future. It's, I mean, it's definitely a family. You, you can, I mean, you can just see it in the locker room. You know, it's a, you know, um, everybody. We all hang out. You know, outside of here too. So yeah, it, it, it's definitely a family. And I'm proud of the Cardi guys, my, my brothers. You know, everybody talks about you know the bowl game season and how great we were, but I, I, I've never been. And I've never been undefeated somewhere since I've been here, so that would, that would be great. Uh, that would be great to go out with. And we'll be back on Inside the Vandals. New names. New faces. They're back and ready to finish. Get your season tickets today at GoVandals.com. Not only is it senior day here at the University of Idaho, it's also Dad's Weekend. Let's hear what it's like to not only be a dad, but also a coach on the field. The love of sports between a father and son is a special connection that can go deeper than just a shared interest. Introducing the important values and lessons sports can behold is a positive and unique experience between a father and son. But getting the opportunity to coach your son in a sport is in many ways priceless. It's been interesting um, playing for him because just because sometimes on the field I don't know whether or not to call him dad, coach. <laughs> the experience being a coach's son, you move a lot, you know, but it's been great. Uh, I've got to live in a lot of places. The experience has been awesome, you know. He's, he's always been our coach our whole life, you know. He's always been that guy that we could go to for anything. For brothers Caden and Christian Ellis, playing for their dad Luther Ellis, a defensive line coach for the Vandals, was not something they expected to happen at the college level, but cherished the opportunity nonetheless. I'm pretty sure I uh, accepted my offer here first, and then after that he was like, Christian, would you mind if I coached there? And I was like, come, you know, I was like, come for it. I didn't know he was going to get into college coaching so soon, but as, uh, as soon as he accepted it and called us and asked us if it was all right, it was a dream come true, you know. And for quarterback Mason Petrino, son of head coach Paul Petrino, Simply getting to be around his dad playing a sport they both share a love for is a blessing within itself. The great thing about playing for my dad is this is probably the three-year period I've seen my dad more than any other years of my life. So it's been a great uh, pleasure playing with my dad. I, I saw him play a lot of soccer games. Mm. saw him play a lot of basketball games when he was young. But I didn't see him play as much football, but now we get to be around each other all the time, so it's a really good deal. But even off the field, they'll always find ways to be a coach, a role model, a father. Minnie's at, Minnie's at my house, he's dad, Minnie's at the dome. 
he's coach. But, you know, they're intermixed. You know, we're a football family. He's been a coach all of his life. So it's, uh, it's been a great experience. And that's something he's really pushed us to is be the best, be the best, because you, you have the potential to do it, so, so go for it. Give everything you got every single day, mm -hmm. you know. Audience of one, you know. Um, he's just been a great role model. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Braden Kane. What a great story for the Petrinos and both of the Ellis brothers, and it is going to be one emotional game for one player in particular, senior linebacker Caden Ellis. Senior Caden Ellis has given his heart to the U of I football team over the last four years, and come game time against Montana, it will be his last time suiting up in the Dome. I still feel young, man. I still feel like I just got here that I was still just playing with QB and Mark Bion and Brock and Chris Ed, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy how fast the time goes. It's a really awesome opportunity to, to play here, to play at the University of Idaho, to play with my brother and my dad, uh, to play with these guys that I've, I've seen grown from my freshman year to now, that I've seen me grown from my freshman year to now. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really been awesome. We will hear from some of our seniors later in the show, but for now, we're gonna look at Idaho Volleyball. They've been rolling all season, doing a great job for the University of Idaho. Zach Kellogg and Jonah Baker join us now. Thanks guys, and Idaho Volleyball been on a tear as of late, Jonah. How have they been able to do it? Well, they've really been firing on all cylinders during this 10 game win streak, the longest of head coach Debbie Buchanan's career, really just getting contributions up and down the roster, especially from the six senior class. Put that win streak on the line though Thursday against Montana here in Moscow. Let's take a look back at that game as well as get some perspective from head coach Debbie Buchanan. The Vandals kicked off their second to last homestand with a bang taking on Montana and Memorial Gym. Coming off a thrilling five-set come-from-behind win against Sacramento State, Idaho swept the Grizzlies for the second time this season. The Vandals started off slow, allowing Montana to build a six-point lead late in the first set, but a couple of adjustments from head coach Debbie Buchanan put Idaho back in the driver's seat to win at 25-23. That momentum carried the team through a dominant 25-11 win in the second, including a pair of 5-0 runs that put the set out of reach. I think we started to play more as a team in set two. Um, our serving picked up. We had quite a few aces that game, and it just anytime you can win the serve and pass battle is huge. Montana continued to hang around through the third and final set, tying things up late at 20 to 20. Idaho seniors then put the Grizzlies away, as Reese Carmen recorded a kill in a block, while Kayla Straw added two of her nine kills on the day to complete the sweep. Up next, the Vandals will take on fellow Big Sky frontrunners Northern Arizona in Flagstaff on November 15th. Zach, as you saw, this volleyball team is really just making all the connections necessary as they get to the back end of this Big Sky season and get ready for the Big Sky tournament. With that big win against Montana, it really seems like they've got everything figured out right now. And the Idaho women's basketball team also starting to get into the start of their season. They played Cal State Northridge in Memorial Gym on Tuesday night, Harrison last year with the coverage from that game. The Idaho women's basketball team opened up the season against Cal State Northridge and were able to pick up the win 88-73. Senior Michaela Ferenz had a great game, scoring 24 points, 18 of those points coming behind the three-point line, with seven rebounds and seven assists. Taylor Pierce also couldn't miss, having 23 points and shooting 57% behind the arc, complemented by five rebounds. The Vandals will now travel to California as they will take on Stanford on Sunday. Stanford is ranked seventh in the country, and the Vandals will need to bring their A game if they want to come out with the win. For Inside the Vandals, I'm Harrison Lashinger. Always great when the Splash Sisters are out on the floor for this team. It's going to be a really exciting season. With Senior Night coming up for the football team, we'll hear from a few more of those seniors, but for now, that'll do it for us here Inside the Vandals. We'll see you all next time. Ed Hall, senior linebacker. That's like a home to me now. And uh, these guys are actually family to me now. So I hope I have these relationships with guys like that in the locker room for the rest of my life. Uh, I feel special to me to finish out this band because, like, all these guys are brothers I came in with. I mean, my class of 2014. These guys I've, I was able to be a family and be a part of. So I feel, I feel, I feel amazed, and I'm honored to be here and to be around my brothers and finish off the right way. You know fighting with my boys and fighting adversity and just growing stronger as a family. And I know I have these boys for the rest of my life, so that's what makes it, that's the cooler part about it.